Friday, seventh week after Pentecost, morning meditation, feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. July 16th, 2021. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choice as Teacher in Moral Theology, Act of Faith in the Presence of God, In Nomina Patria Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Most Holy, Adorable, and Undivided Trinity, One God and Three Persons, I believe that Thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. St. Alphonsus de Liguori, pray for us. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon. One life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility, O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being culminated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. That others may become holier than I, provide that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace of desire. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this our morning meditation through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary of a Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia, upon Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, ora penubis peccatoribus, nuc in hor mortis nostre. Amen. In honor of St. Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray, Gloria Patria Filio, Spiritus Sancto, Secret Eret in Principio, Nucet Semper, and Secula Seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created. You shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning Meditation, The Amiable Heart of Jesus. The heart of Jesus is all pure, all holy, all full of love towards God and towards us. Every perfection, every virtue reigns in this heart. This is the heart in which God himself finds all delight. O amiable heart of Jesus, thou dost well deserve the love of all hearts. He who shows himself amiable in everything must necessarily make himself loved. Oh, if we only applied ourselves to discover all the good qualities by which Jesus Christ renders himself worthy of our love, we should all be under the happy necessity of loving him. And what heart among all hearts can be found more worthy of love than the heart of Jesus Christ? A heart all pure, all holy, all full of love towards God and towards us, because all its desires are for the divin divine glory and our good. This is the heart in which God finds all his delight. Every perfection, every virtue reigns in this heart. 
A most ardent love for God, his Father united with the greatest humility and respect that can possibly exist. A sovereign confusion for our sins, which he has taken upon himself, united to the extreme confidence of a most affectionate son. A sovereign abhorrence of our sins, united to a lively compassion for our miseries. An extreme sorrow, united to a perfect conformity to the will of God. So that in Jesus is found everything that is most amiable. O oh, my amiable Redeemer, what object more worthy of love could the Eternal Father command me to love than thee? Thou art thy, the beauty of paradise. Thou art the love of thy Father. Thy heart is the throne of all virtues. O oh, amiable heart of my Jesus, thou dost well deserve the love of all hearts. Poor and wretched is that heart which loves thee not. Thus miserable, O oh my God, has my heart been during all the time in which it has not loved thee. But I will not continue to be thus wretched. I love thee. I will always continue to love thee, O oh my Jesus. O oh my Lord, I have hitherto forgotten thee, and now what can I expect? That my ingratitude will oblige thee to forget me entirely and forsake me forever? No, my Savior, do not permit it. Thou art the object of the love of God. And shall thou not then be loved by a miserable sinner such as I am, who have been so favorable, so favored and loved by thee? O lovely flames that burn in the amiable heart of my Jesus, enkindle in my poor heart that holy fire which Jesus came down from heaven to kindle on earth, consume and destroy all the impure affections that dwell in my heart and prevent it from being entirely his. Some are attracted to love, others by their beauty, others by their innocence, others by living with them, others by devotion. But if there were a person in whom all these things and all other virtues were united, who could help loving him? If we heard that there was in a distant foreign country a prince who was handsome, humble, courteous, devout, full of charity, affable to all, who rendered good to those, did him evil, then although we knew him not, he was as though he knew us Although we knew not who he was, and though he knew not us, and though we were not acquainted with him, nor was there any possibility of our ever being so, yet we should be enamored of him and should be constrained to love him. How is it then possible that Jesus Christ, who possesses in himself all these virtues, and in the most perfect degree, and who loves us so tenderly, how is it possible that he should be so little loved by men it should not be the only object of our love. Oh my God, how is it that Jesus, who alone is worthy of love and who has given us so many proofs of the love that he bears us, should be alone, as it were, the unlucky one with us who cannot succeed in making us love him as if he were not sufficiently worthy of our love. This is what caused floods of tears to St. Rose of Lima, St. Catherine of Genoa, to St. Teresa, to St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, who, on considering the ingratitude of men, exclaim, weeping, love is not loved. Love is not loved. Oh, my God, grant that I may exist only to love thee and thee alone, my dear Savior. If at one time I despise thee, thou art not the only object of my love. I love thee. I love thee. I love thee. And I will never love any but thee. My beloved Lord, do not disdain to accept the love of a heart which has once afflicted thee by its sins. Let it be thy glory to exhibit to the angels a heart now burning with the love of thee, which hitherto shunned and despised thee. Most Holy Virgin Mary, my hope, do thou assist me and beseech Jesus to make me by his grace all that he wishes me to be. Spiritual reading, prayer, conditions of prayer, five, the prayer of sinners. But I am a sinner, you will say, and in the scriptures I read, God doth not hear sinners. John 9, 31. St. Thomas answers with St. Augustine, That is the word of a blind man, not yet perfectly enlightened, and therefore it is not authoritative. Unquote. Besides, St. Thomas adds, It is true of the petition which the sinner makes, quote, so far as he is a sinner, unquote. that is, when he asks from a desire of continuing the sin, as for instance, if he were to ask assistance to enable him to take revenge on his enemy or to execute any other bad intention. The same holds good for the sinner who prays God to save him. 
but has no desire to quit the state of sin. There are some unhappy persons who love the chains with which the devil keeps them bound like slaves. The prayers of such men are not heard by God because they are rash and abominable. For what greater temerity can there be that for a man to ask favors of a prince whom he not only has often offended, but whom he intends to offend still more? And this is the meaning of the Holy Spirit when he says that the prayer of him who turns away his ears so as not to hear what God commands is detestable and odious to God. Quote, he who turneth away his ears from learning the law, his prayer shall be an abomination. Proverbs 28 verse 9. To these people God says, you need not pray to me, for I will turn my eyes from you and will not hear you. Quote, when you stretch forth your hands, I will turn away my eyes from you. And when you multiply prayer, I will not hear you. Isaiah 1.15 Such precisely was the prayer of the impious king Antochius, who prayed to God and made great promises, but insincerely, with a heart obstinate in sin, the sole object of his prayer being to escape the punishment that appended over him. Therefore God did not hear his prayer, but caused him to die, devoured by worms. Quote, then this wicked man prayed to the Lord, of whom he was not like to obtain mercy. 2 Maccabees 9, verse 13. But there are others who sin through frailty or by the violence of some great passion and who groan under the yoke of the enemy and desire to break the chains of death and to escape from their miserable slavery. And for this, they ask the assistance of God. The prayer of these, if it is persevering, will certainly be heard by God, who says, quote, For everyone that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth. Matthew 8. Verse 7, verse 8. Everyone, quote, everyone, whether he be a just man or a sinner, says the author of Opius Imperfectum and St. Luke, our Lord, when speaking of the man who gave all the loaves he had had to his friend, not so much on account of his friendship as because of the other's importunity, says, quote, if he shall continue knocking, I say to you, although he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And so I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Luke 11, 8 and 9. So that persevering prayer obtains mercy from God, even for those who are not his friends. Quote, that which is not obtained through friendship, says St. Christum, is obtained by prayer. He even says that prayer is valued more by God than friendship. Quote, friendship is not of such avail with God as prayer. That which is not affected by friendship is affected by prayer. And St. Basil doubts not that even sinners obtain what they ask if they persevere in praying. Quote, sinners obtain what they seek if they seek perseveringly. St. Gregory says the same, quote, the sinner shall also cry and his prayer shall reach to God, unquote. So likewise, St. Jerome, who says that even the sinner can call God his father if he prays to him to receive him back as a son, after the example of the prodigal son who called him father, quote, father, I have sinned. Luke 15, 21, even though he had not as yet been pardoned. And St. Augustine, quote, If God does not hear sinners, in vain would the, that publican have said, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Luke 18, verse 13. But the gospel assures us that the publican did by his prayer obtain forgiveness. Quote, This man went down into his house justified. Luke 18, 14. But... St. Thomas, who examines this point more minutely than others, does not hesitate to affirm that even a sinner is heard if he prays, for those prayer is not mer meritorious, yet it has the power of impetration, that is, of obtaining what is asked, because impetration is not founded on God's justice, but on his goodness. Quote, merit, he says, depends on justice, impetration on grace. Thus did Daniel pray, quote, Incline, on, O my God, thine ear and hear, for it is not for our justifications do we present our prayers before thy face, but for the multitude of thy mercies. Daniel 9, verse 18. Therefore, when we pray, says St. Thomas, it is not necessary to be the friends of God in order to obtain the grace we ask for. Quote, Prayer itself makes us of the family of God. Unquote. Moreover, St. Bernard uses a beautiful explanation of this, saying that the prayer of a sinner to escape from sin arises from the desire to return to the grace of God. Now, this desire is a gift, which is certainly given by no other than God himself. Quote, to what end, therefore, says St. Bernard, would God give to a sinner this holy desire, unless he meant to hear him? Unquote. And indeed, in the Holy Scriptures themselves, there are multitudes of instances of sinners who have been delivered from sin by prayer. 
Thus was King Akab delivered, thus King Manassas, thus King Nebuchadnezzar, and thus the good thief. A wonderful thing, the mighty power of prayer. Two sinners are dying on Calvary by the side of Jesus Christ. One, because he prays, remember me, is saved. The other, as he does not pray, is damned. And then fine, St. Chrysostom says, quote, No man has with sorrow asked favors from him without obtaining what he wished, unquote. But why should we cite more authorities and give more reasons to demonstrate this point when our Lord himself says, quote, Come to me, all you that labor and are burdened. I will refresh you. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. The burdened, according to St. Augustine, Jerome, and others, are sinners in general who groan under the load of their sins and who, if they have recourse to God, will surely, according to his promise, be refreshed and saved by his grace. Ah, uh, we cannot desire to be pardoned so much as he longs to pardon us. Quote, thou dost not, says St. Christotum, so much desire thy sins to be forgiven as he desires to forgive thy sins. Unquote. And he goes on to say, quote, there is nothing which prayer cannot obtain. Though a man were guilty of a thousand sins, provided it be fervent and unremitting. And let us mark well the words of St. James, quote, If any of you wanteth wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all abundantly and upbraideth not. James 1, five. All those, therefore, who pray to God and infallibly are infallibly heard by him and receive grace in abundance, quote, he giveth to all abundantly. But you should particularly remark the words which follow, and upbraideth not. This means that God does not do as men who, when a person has formerly done them an injury, comes to ask a favor, immediately upbraid him with his offense. God does not do so to the man who prays. Even though he were the greatest sinner in the world, when he asks for some grace conducive to his eternal salvation, then he does not upbraid him with the offenses he has committed, but as though he has never displeased him, he instantly receives him and consoles him and hears him and enriches him with an abundance of his gifts. To crown all our Savior in order to encourage us to pray, he says, Amen, Amen, I say to you, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. John sixteen twenty three. As though he had said, Courage, O sinners, do not despair. Do not let your sins turn you away from having recourse to my Father and from hoping to be saved by him if you desire it. You have not now any merits to obtain the graces which you ask for, for you only deserve to be punished. Still, do this. Go to my Father in my name. And... Through my merits, ask all the favors you want, and I promise and swear to you, amen, amen, I say to you, which according to St. Augustine is a species of oath, that whatever you ask, my Father will grant. Oh God, what greater comfort can a sinner have after his fall than to know for certain that whatever he asks from God in the name of Jesus Christ will be given to him? I say all but I mean only that which has reference to his eternal salvation. For with respect to temporal goods, we have already shown that God, even when asked, sometimes does not give them, because he sees that they would injure the soul. But so far as it relates to spiritual goods, his promise to hear us is not conditional, but absolute. And therefore, St. Augustine tells us that those things which God promises absolutely, we should demand with absolute certainty of receiving. And how, says the saint, can God ever deny us anything when we ask him for it with confidence? How much more does he not desire to dispense to us graces than we to receive them? Quote, he is more willing to be munificent in his benefits to thee than thou art desirous to receive them. St. Christum says that the only time when God is angry with us is when we neglect to ask him for his gifts. Quote, he is only angry when we do not pray, unquote. And how can it ever happen that God will not hear a soul who asks him for what is according to his own heart? When the soul says to him, Lord, I ask thee not for the goods of this world, riches, pleasures, honors. I ask thee only for the grace, for thy grace. Deliver me from sin. Grant me a good death. Give me paradise. Give me thy holy love which is the grace which St. Francis de Sales says we should seek more than all others. Give me resignation to thy will. How is it possible that God should not hear? What petitions will thou, O my God, ever hear, says St. Augustine, if thou dost not hear those which are made after thine own heart? 
but above all, our confidence ought to revive when we pray to God for spiritual graces. As Jesus Christ says, quote, If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father from heaven give the good spirit to them that ask him? Luke eleven thirteen. If you, who are so attached to your own interests, so full of self-love, cannot refuse your children that which they ask, how much more will your Father, your Heavenly Father, who loves you better than all earthly father, than any earthly father, grant you his spiritual goods when you pray for them? Concluding prayer. I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will, that I may in uniformity with your divine will, O triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well. For the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay that thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I have been, even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance in thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory, for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomen of Patria Filii, Spiritus Sancti, men have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.